This is a very personal video for me. In fact, it's on a subject that I've written two books and a song about. The books are Deep Time, which was published by Delacorte back in 1989, and Equations of Eternity, published by Hyperion in 1993. There's a link to a video of my song at the end. You've probably gathered from the channel and other work I've done that I like to combine science and music. To me, they're two powerful but different ways of exploring the same ideas. The subject here is ex nihilo, or the proposition that something can come from nothing. According to this view, the universe is effectively a free lunch. Everything we see around us today sprang from literally nothing. Except, of course, that can't be true, because the one thing we can be absolutely sure of is that nothing never existed. By definition, nothing, no time, space, matter or energy, is the absence of existence. So nothing never could exist, which still leaves us with a puzzle, how the something around us came about. It's also the starting point for my book, Deep Time, and I'm going to read to you now the first short chapter from that book. Without time, without space, without matter or energy. This is the beginning of the universe and there's nothing, not even a point, not even a void. Out of this nothingness arose a stir, an eddy, a flicker, a something inconceivably small. And with that something as part of it, time, space and other wonders came spontaneously into being. The lid of Pandora's cosmic box had begun to lift, and from beneath it issue all the marvels of creation. Yet by whose hand had that lid been set ajar? And if the answer is no one's, then how was the magic of Genesis performed? Countless myths are told of the creation myths, both ancient and modern, steeped in wonder, each offering its own special window upon the Genesis event from India and China, from the native cultures of Africa and Australia and North America, they come, summoning all manner of gods and heroic creatures to do the seemingly impossible, to bring the world into being. And not just the world, but the sun and moon and stars as well, and in company with these, all of space and time. And now these older tales are joined by fresh myths, born not of faith, not of archaic, unchallenged wisdom, but of science, yet no less strange for all that. Gone may be the gods. Gone, at least, is their essential presence at each stage of the shaping of what's real. Now nature alone is seen as potent enough, creative enough, to draw itself into existence. In the beginning, so these new myths of science would tell us, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, no matter or energy or space or time. Then came a tiny hiccup, a trivial fluctuation that transformed nothingness into something. Perhaps, our myth would have us believe, the primordial nothingness was unstable. Remarkable. The universe born of nothing of its own accord. But no, not entirely nothing, because if time itself had its origin with some capricious inaugural event, then how did that event manage to occur at all? How could the act of creation begin outside of time? Unless the rule book of nature were written prior to Genesis, how could a state of unbeing know that it had to change? Isn't nothingness a much simpler condition and therefore one more likely to prevail than that of a universe teeming with exotic forms of matter and energy. To all appearances, the absence of anything could hardly be more perfect. Why should it sully itself with the seeds of stars and stargazers? This is the central dilemma of Genesis, and it afflicts all cosmologies, ancient and modern. Wherever the universe came from, before it could emerge, there had to be guiding principles, pre-existing natural laws. But where did those laws come from? And in any case, how can a law exist disembodied and outside of time? 
Perhaps before the laws of physics came the laws of logic, so that the physical laws chosen were the only ones in combination that proved logically consistent. But who said the cosmos had to be logical? And from where did the rules of logic appear? Time is a marvellous trickster, but one of the greatest hoaxes it perpetrates is to make the creation of the universe seem like the beginning of everything. Imagine a stream that courses down a tall mountain. At the foot of the mountain, on the banks of the stream, lives a tribe. To the people of this isolated commune, the stream, with its clear, refreshing water, is essential. It's their very lifeblood. And so because of this, it's also the focal point for the musings of the tribal wise. Where does the stream come from? What is its true beginning? So steep and high is the mountain that none can scale it to seek a definitive answer. And so the wise contrive their theories and spend their days arguing this way and that. It's the god of the mountains, say some, whose tears, shed for the loss of his beloved son, tumble down as the waters of the stream. No, insist others, that's only an admission of ignorance. The stream must somehow issue naturally out of a crack near the mountain's summit. But what happens within the crack, that remains a mystery. Each day the tribe is blessed with cloudless skies, but almost every night while the people sleep, and they sleep very soundly, it pours with rain. The rain falls on the mountain top, collects as a stream, and serves with each new day to sustain the tribe and its puzzled priests. Further down the valley, where these insular folk never venture, the little stream grows to become a river. And after hundreds of miles, the river reaches the sea, whose water then evaporates to form clouds, which in turn drop rain on the great mountain, to feed the stream that nourishes the tribe. How short-sighted of these primitive folk, never to have realised all that. But then what of the universe? To the high priests of science and philosophy and theology, that too is usually regarded as having a special point of origin. And yet isn't that just as myopic a view as the one held by the sages of our imaginary tribe? The stream it transpired had no true source, no real beginning. Might the same not also be true of the cosmos? To understand this greatest of all mysteries, the origin of everything, we need to go on a mental journey, a voyage into deep time. A voyage that begins with Genesis and ends in the very remote future of a universe that quite astonishingly contrives to become aware of itself. Thanks for watching. In future videos I'm going to be looking more into this controversial subject of Ex Nihilo.